Once again, thank you very much, both of you, for coming. Uh, I guess I have a two-part question for each of you for a second. Um, you said that the European model of secularization would not really be uh, exported to other parts of the world. Uh, what, what do you think of European secularization itself, where it itself is heading? Uh, we see for the last five, six decades that secularization definitely has been on the rise. Do you think it will continue to be on the rise until it reaches high level? I mean, if you just talk about, for example, the, the atheism, which is, I, I think, one manifestation, if you like, of, of secularization, we see that the figures uh, uh, of people who don't really believe in any type of divinity is definitely on the rise in the last six, seven decades. The question is, where is this heading? Do you think it will reach a very high level in the high 90s, or will it taper out, or will it backlash, and, and we see a resurgence even in Europe, as we see in other uh, parts of the world. That's the first part of the question. Second part uh, is to our other speaker. Uh, where do you think Turkey itself is heading uh, as straddling between its Islamic side and its European side? Uh, suppose politics does not get involved, which is a very big if, but suppose it doesn't. Uh, as a, a, a person from that area of the world, what are your gut instincts? Where, where is all this heading? Because we've read a lot this week about Turkey in particular, so I'm just curious to see your inside perspective of the issue. So. I mean, I, I guess uh, I guess I would say two things about uh, about the, the religious future of Europe. Um, the first thing is that um, within the Protestant world, at least, um, those religious movements and denominations that are thriving are ones that exhibit mo all or most of the organizational features that I highlighted at the end of my talk. Uh, and so, uh, the second uh, part of my answer would be that. Um, to the degree to which religious resurgence in Europe occurs, it will depend a lot on whether or not robust movements that have learned those kinds of lessons arise uh, within within Europe uh, or or not. And uh, that I think is, you know, I mean, there are limits to the kinds of prediction that you know, big limits to which social science can aspire. And I think that's about as far as it, whether or not such movements will arise. Who knows? Uh, I mean, it's difficult to know where Turkey is heading, really, uh, I think, because, I mean, uh, just as one sees a kind of, uh, perhaps what, could, what one, one could characterize as accommodation, you know, there's a religious party or religious, uh, a party with religious origins or with some kind of a religious identity in government and things go uh, as normal, uh, there have been new crises that have been brought about, you know, by the actions of the constitutional court, or um, uh, you know, or um, uh, by kind of by these political crises that have been seen in the last year or so. So it's it's difficult to know. Um, I mean, I think the, the the choice for Turkey right now is not between Islam and Europe, definitely, because I mean that we see that many of the uh, of the political party, the Justice and Development Party, for example, although it has now um, kind of stopped its. Uh, it's kind of um, active defense of reforms to join the EU. Um, it is actually the most pro-EU party, that, uh, you know, among the major parties. So, so the, the choice is not really between the two. And I would, um, I would argue that uh, the Turkish secularism right now is uh, not aligned necessarily with European political values. I mean, uh, and it, it has in the 1920s when, when it was kind of first instituted more strongly. Of course, it has origins in, um, in reforms under late Ottoman Empire. But w when these radical secularizing reforms were made, um, some aspects of it, I would say, or the, 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 uh, the way that it institutionalized certain political um, arrangements was very much in line with, with, the kind of, uh, with Europe. But now, actually, that, that its rigidity has, um, has, um, uh, has put it into, into a confrontation with, let's say, in political uh, liberals in Turkey. Uh, so it's not necessarily, I mean, whether, whether um, the militant secularists will have the upper hand or the, uh, you know, more kind of um, this religious party and its movement will have the upper hand, I don't think that's certain. But in either way, I don't think Europe lies necessarily on one side of it or the European kind of orientation lies in either side of that conflict. If anything, I think in the current situation at least, um, I think the militant secularists kind of uh, let's let's take the military involvement in Turkish politics. I mean, that's, that has been something that uh, um, European Commission reports on Turkey have uh, again and again criticized repeatedly. That that has always been one of the major items that the call for a reform in in um, pulling military more out of the politics. And um, 
and, and that has been actually kind of, you know, the secularists don't like that that much. They, they want to have it as a safeguard. So, so, so I think if anything, uh, perhaps we can say that kind of the, um, the more European, Europeanization of Turkey may interestingly lie in, in kind of uh, this moment, uh, the militant secularists not having the upper hand.